Hey friends out there in YouTube land, Robert Ham here with Robert Ham Photography, and today we're going to be going over macro photography, so stick around, it's going to be a fun ride. Today's video comes from Antoinella over in Italy, and today she says, hey, you know, I'm having a trouble with macro photography and close-up, can you give me some help? And I'm here to do exactly that, I've got you covered. So if you guys are out there, like Antoinella, interested in knowing about macro photography and how to get the best results with the TL70, I'm here to answer those questions. Let's jump into it now. First thing to note, if you're gonna do close-up photography with the TL70, you're gonna need the lens kit, and that comes with the close-up lens right there. How cool is that? Now this allows you to focus as close as up to 18 centimeters away, which is really cool. The number one thing I hear about macro photography from people that are using instant film happens to be the color is not correct, so the colors are washed out, usually not a bright coloring, usually orange, red, or green. Let's dive into color. Uh, color is real simple. Fujifilm Instax Mini Film is a daylight balanced film, period. So if you're indoors, indoor lighting is not daylight balanced. Let me just go into a little bit of what that means so that you can understand what daylight balance means and why your, your images might have a different color than what you would expect or what's on your cell phone. Unlike a digital sensor, which has the ability to change its color temperature, color, the, the color of light between red and green and blue is rated in a temperature value of uh, degrees Kelvin, um, color temperature on your cell phone can be changed real simply, usually just by popping that little cell phone, touching it, a spot meter will change the color temperature and match what's there. But not on Instax film or any other kind of film. Film does not give the ability to change the color value. You just can't do it, can you? Because it's a property of the film itself. Instax mini film is daylight balanced. Daylight outside on a sunny 16 day, which means daylight outside on a bright sunny day, unlike today in Virginia Beach, which is rainy and nasty. Which is another great reason I'm so excited that Antonella asked me this question. Gave me something to do for you guys today. Daylight balanced film is balanced for the light that you would see outdoors when you are standing in an area that would have a hard shadow. Think about two, three o'clock sunlight. It's very warm, it's very, very yellowish blue. It's got that golden kind of color, but it's warmer than cooler, so it's more golden than it is cool. It's more yellow than it is blue. And that's important because the film will provide the best results when you're outdoors. And this is interesting because when you're doing macro photography and you're photographing flowers and stuff, most of the time we do that on a nice bright day. And so we have two things that don't get in the way. Color temperature because it's outside and then a lot of light because it's not only outside, it's the kind of light that the film was made for. Okay, so we've talked about the first part. When you go and you take a picture with instant film, specifically the TL70, if you're in an area that is using lighting other than the sun, you're gonna have color shift and there are ways to get around it. And the way I chose today was to use flash, right over here. Uh, flash helped me get around it. But let's move into the next part. The next part is exposure, right? So here's what happens. If you're indoors, there's already not a lot of light. And then when you get closer to something, the volume of light, its intensity is not as great as the amount of ambient light that's in here. That's what's important. So the closer you get to something, the actual less ambient light you have between the subject and the film in order for the lens to focus and make an image on the film. The closer you get to something, the darker the image can also get as well, especially if it's an inanimate object. And then the other thing I hear about is exposure. Specifically with the TL70, I hear that people have exposure problems because the, pro the image doesn't come out exposed like you would think, even if the light is lighting up green on the TL70. Now, what can we do in order to help that out? You see that? Nice flash. You can push that little flash button and it'll light up the whole world. The problem with it is that although very smart, although being able to um, augment and diminish its power based on the focus length, it is directional, and directional flash with macro photography generally causes hard shadows, nasty blown out images. Not a lot of fun. So what do we need to do? If we want to use flash, if we want to increase the amount of light that's where we are, we need to use these external flash right here. By doing so, they have a trigger on the front which will read a bright, brief light that comes into it, sending it as an optical trigger, telling it to trigger its flash. And that means that if we're gonna not use the direct camera flash on here, but we wanna use the camera flash here, what do we need to do? Well, we need to employ a mirror of some sort, 
and some kind of diffusion. I just used this little compact because you guys know I like to powder my nose. Come on, let's, let's be serious here. I'm, I'm not powdering my nose. It's my wife's, right? So what I do is I use this. It's got a mirror on it, and then I put it at the little 45. I'm going to try to do this so that it makes sense, but I'll also insert some pictures for you. Then when I put it on here, I try to hold it in such a way so that the flash would right now go straight, but if I put this at an angle, you'll notice I can, I can now direct the flash in another way. And because I don't want any flash that's escaping uh, that is going around the compact or the mirror, uh, I'm going to use my favorite Gary Fong light sphere and, or light sphere. I'll use the dome and that will help diffuse any light that does make its way going forward. Now this seems like a big overdrawn process. Don't you worry about that. I've got a lot easier stuff that you can use. You can just use a little piece of aluminum foil and do the same thing. In fact, in the end, that's what I settled for because it won't allow any light to pass and it will reflect just like you like. But if you don't want to do that, you can also use the, the dome, putting it straight in front of the camera for your regular photography or just a nice piece of white paper folded in half a couple times. It'll give a little warmer hue, but it'll work. Okay, so what's that actually going to do? The reason we're going to want to use flash and light it from a different direction is because we don't want the light hitting the subject straight on. We want the light coming down and illuminating the subject. So by using this to accept a signal in here and then shooting the flash up to my ceiling, which is white, the light will bounce back down, also diffused in a much wider area, giving me a very nice soft light around the entire thing. Now, this may seem a little bit convoluted to get the best portraits, but hey, we can go one step further. If you don't want to use all of these tools that we've talked about, and you're just using your actual camera itself, I've got you covered there as well. All you have to do is open it up, turn it around, flip it to bulb, right? And then put the camera on some kind of very stable surface. A tripod is good or a flat surface as well. That's also good. And what you're going to want to do is breathe in and then exhale. Wait for the natural pause and then click the button. And there's a very important reason why. In bulb mode, we're going to allow that smaller volume of light to actually impact and hit the lens or go through the lens and affect the actual film for a longer period of time. So we're making up for the extra light that we put into the picture with external flash, and we're making up for the color balance of that light by giving an additional length of time through the bulb mode. Now here's the tricky part. You will either need to know how long you think it should be just because you're experienced with reading light, or you'll need to use an app like the light meter. Now I always use the light meter. So for today's shots, I was using the light meter. This room right now has an exposure value of eight, which means that we can get a perfectly exposed picture. The problem we will encounter with the macro photography is getting the same quality of light all around the room in the different areas so that the picture will come out properly exposed. And in my opinion, that happened twice. And let's talk about that. The uh, two times where it happened was actually image number 282. We're gonna show that right now. 282 was actually a long one second exposure that I did with the camera itself and I used it 5.6 with positive exposure compensation. And that allowed this particular image to come out very nicely exposed. I'm using, like I said, very warm lighting in here so I like the lights. If I was using much cooler lights, um, it would have been greener, but I particularly like this. Notice, however, there's not a lot of detail in the background. That's because they're, we're very close. You can't see my wall back there so easily. And I'm using f5.6. Another common concern that people have when photographing with the macro lens is they can't get things in proper focus. Macro photography at wide apertures is very difficult. You're already going to get a lot of compression to throw the background out of focus anyways, so you don't need a, a very shallow depth of field, and that's a mistake people make. With macro photography, you actually need a very deep depth of field so you can get your entire subject in focus. In this case, we need to use f16. And in a couple of my other photos, I did use F16. This is F16 with the external flash, number 283. 
So right there, external flash, F16, we're able to see quite a bit more depth of field, and we're also being able to now properly expose for the background. This would be a, a very well exposed image. Uh, the problem is I wanted to do something a little bit more. I wanted to add just a little bit more light. So here's what we need to do, either add an additional flash, which I could have done, I've got plenty, but I didn't want to do that for us, or change our exposure value just a little bit. So from F16, I moved to F8. Now what we're gonna see when I move over to F8 is that we're still able to get a really great exposure. We're gonna able to get the in-between from using no flash, and then we're able to get the in-between from using very powerful flash at a smaller aperture. So we're right in the middle, and you know, kind of like is the standard that I find. Uh, what I prefer is actually the three together, right? So you can see right here, F16 with flash one-to-one -one power, F8 with flash one-to-one -one power, and F5.6 with no flash. My preference is right in the middle. I didn't like my porch too hot. I didn't like my porch too cold. I like my porch just a little in the middle. I didn't like my aperture too small because then I got too dark. I didn't like my aperture too big because then I lost detail. I like my aperture right there in the middle. And that's what you're gonna find. When you're using a uh, F8 on this camera, here's some anecdotal information for you. I like F8. Out of all the apertures on the camera, F8 is my favorite aperture because it is the most well-rounded aperture in all situations. And let's talk about that for a second. Outside in the shade on a bright sunny day where if you were standing in the sun with hard shadows, you can go into the shade like in a garden where you've got tree limbs over top of you or the shade of a building, and you can use F8 with or without exposure compensation and get a perfectly beautifully exposed image in the auto mode of the camera. Switch to F8 and it's great. Outdoors in the bright sunlight, you can use F8 plus ND8 at the beach where you're at an exposure value of a 17, which is two stops brighter than the sunny 16 rules made to do. And that's because you've got reflective water. Think about a poolside environment or a water fun park. You can go out in the bright sunlight and use F8 plus ND8 and get a beautifully exposed image. How cool is that? And we can also come back into the room. We can do macro photography. We can use F8 plus an external flash and get excellent power and excellent photos. Hey, guess what, guys? F8 is great. It's my favorite. Learn to play around with it and share your experiences with me. I want to talk to one other thing for a second before I end this video, and that has to do with metering. Right now, it should be very apparent that the way I and others get excellent photos with the TL70 is that we're diligent in metering the lighting situation. That means we just download a simple little app and use the meter on the app to light meter. That's my recipe for success, and I shared it with you guys absolutely free. If you like these videos, don't forget to share them on your favorite social network. It helps me out quite a bit. Tell Mint and Gary and Tracy and Joe over there how much you like these videos. Come hang out with me on Instagram. Find me over on Twitter. Look me up on Facebook. And I will catch you on the flip side. Thanks for watching.